different today, and um, you're, you're at church in your house, and I hope that you don't get too comfortable there, because this is soon going to be over, and we're going to be back together as a church family. It's a little odd being here today with nobody else here except just a few people here singing and, and serving. I appreciate all those that came today that uh, have sung, those that are working on our video cameras today and our sound uh, system. We are practicing social distancing, and uh, nobody is friendly here today. No one has shaken any hands, um, but I'm glad that you're watching. My wife reminded me this morning on the way in, she said, a good message doesn't have to be long, and a bad one shouldn't be. And so she was encouraging me to be brief to the point, and uh, I plan to do that here today. We have been studying Acts chapter number 14, and uh, last couple weeks we've been in Acts 14, and today we're going to go there as well. And I have enjoyed this study through Acts. It's been amazing as we have been studying through Acts what uh, the Lord is doing, even in the midst of uh, our world right now and all the things that are happening. Uh, lately, we've been looking at things in Acts that you would think 2,000 years ago, how can this apply today? And it is applying right now, today, in what we're living in. And I'm so thankful that the Word of God is alive. I'm sure glad it's not a dead book, an old book that's not relevant today, but it is the Word of God that is able to change us and help us in times of need. I want you to follow along with me in verse number 19, if you would, please. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up, came unto the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas in Derbe. Now that's an amazing verse. Just think about that. Paul is, is, is stoned. Now, not stoned as in he was using drugs that evening. It's stoned as in they took him out into the city, out of the city, and picked up rocks. And they intended, the Bible said, to kill him. And they would pick up rocks, gather rocks, and throw the heap of rocks on top of Paul. They thought that Paul was dead. And so they left thinking they've done away with Paul. But Paul, miraculously, he gets up out from underneath of that heap of stones, and he continues to serve the Lord. Now, many of us, especially this last week, we have felt like there has been a burden on top of us. It feels like some have lost their jobs. Some, it seems like they have um, just gone through some, some really uh, hurtful times. There are some people right now wondering, are we ever going to be able to get up from this heap of stones that's on top of us? Are we ever going to recover financially? Are we ever going to be able to recover as a state, as a nation, as a family? Are we going to be able to recover? I want you to know this, that God is the God of miracles. That God could take anything that humanly looks like a disaster, that humanly looks like it's the end, that humanly it looks like it's over, and there's nothing we can do about it, and God can raise you up from underneath of a pile of stones. Because God has a job and a work that he wants you to do. Let's continue reading. The Bible says, And when they had preached the gospel to that city, and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra, and to Iconium, and to Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples, and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must, through much tribulation, enter the kingdom of God. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. And let's look down in verse number 27. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. I am so glad for technology. They had told me right before I got up to preach that we had uh, about 250 or more probably by this point uh, that have logged on through Facebook or through our church app or our website. And, and you know what is amazing? That the church can still gather together today. I, I am thankful for the technology that the Lord's given us today. I, I know a lot of times technology can be used for, for bad things or for wicked things, but I'm so thankful today that the church can still gather 
I was reminded today that the church is not a building. The church is it's God's people. And even though we can't meet today, we can still gather and we can still be thankful for what God's doing in our life. And so let me, let me get right into the message this morning. And I want to speak to you today on this subject of we are living in troubled times. We are living in troubled times. You would have to agree, according to this passage of Scripture, that Paul and Barnabas and, and uh, others that were with them on this missionary journey, they were living in troubled times. This was not the very first time that they faced trouble. It was previously in, in the other cities that they had visited on this missionary journey that they found themselves in trouble. They found themselves being kicked out of cities. They found themselves being threatened for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. They found themselves in this time being stoned, physically attacked, and left for dead. They are in trouble. As I read through this passage of Scripture, I'm reminded of the world that we're living in today. It seems like we're in trouble. And how do we respond? What, what can we do in troubled times? Now, we can worry, we can stress, we can get upset and become afraid. And I believe that we ought to use wisdom. I believe that we ought to be caring for our families and doing the necessary things so that our families have their needs met during this troubled time. I don't think that there's anything wrong with properly preparing ourselves for trouble. But when our pre preparation comes out of fear or worry that's when i think the christian finds himself in trouble because don't forget christian that we have a god that has promised to deliver us we have a god that has promised to meet our needs we have a god that is faithful we have a god that loves his children that bible still says to ask and to seek and that if we do that we'll find and I want to encourage you today that as we're living in troubled times, make sure that we're not living out of fear or worry or stress. But the truth is we're living in troubled times. And so what do we do? How do we respond here as we're living in troubled times? I want you to go with me again to verse number 19. And we find this, and there were certain Jews in Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people. And having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra, into Iconium, into Antioch. Now, something so interesting here, I want you to see here, while they were living in troubled times, this group of people, these disciples of Christ, these followers of Christ, could have been afraid. They could have quit. They could have said, Paul could have said, there's no way that God is here with us. There's no way that God is, is, is uh, blessing us because I just found myself on the bottom of a heap of stones. It seems like every message that we're preaching, many people are rejecting it. It seems like as we are trying to be faithful and live our lives, it seems like it's just one distress or one problem after another. But I want you to see, according to this passage of Scripture that we read today, that as we're living in faithful or troubled times, faithfulness to the Lord is required in the midst of trouble. Faithfulness to the Lord is required by the believer in the midst of trouble. Listen to me, when trouble comes, don't give up on the Lord. There are some here today that you are maybe just a, a, a short distance away of, of giving up hope. And I want to encourage you today, when trouble comes, be faithful to the Lord. Be faithful. Be faithful to Him. When trouble comes, don't give up on the Lord. Because He has not given up on you. Trouble that we're facing in this world does not mean that God doesn't have his hand still upon us. Don't blame the Lord in our lives. Maybe some this week are experiencing some uh, uh, financial hurt. 
There are some this week that are experiencing some pain because of losing a job. Maybe you're worried about school and what we're going to do, whether you're a college student or a high school senior. You are thinking 2020 is the the great year that I'm going to graduate and, and move forward with my life. And maybe this week, today, right now, you're sitting here saying, what is the future going to hold? Maybe you just got that new job. And you had great anticipation and great excitement. You just got a new raise or, or something just transpired. You, you got a new vehicle or maybe you just purchased a new house. And, and then this trouble comes. Well, hear me today. When the, if the Lord was blessing you two weeks ago, then he's still blessing you today. Because he is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He's faithful. And we need to be faithful to serve the Lord even in the midst of our trouble. I'm reminded of Job. I'm reminded of the trouble that Job faced. Matter of fact, it was Job's friends and his wife and those closest to Job. The advice they gave to Job was this, just curse God and die. Get over this. There, there's, you must have done something wrong. God must be punishing you for something. And all, oh, listen to me, trouble comes and it doesn't mean that God's punishing you. Trouble comes, and it doesn't mean that God's angry with us. Trouble comes because we live in a sinful world. And since the beginning of time, when man chose to sin, from that time forward, trouble has always come. Listen to me, Christian. I I love history. I I, I read a lot of history. History is one of my favorite subjects to study. You know what I find in every generation? Trouble has come. In every generation of mankind, there's been trouble. And in every generation that trouble has come, there's always been the faithful that have trusted God through it. We're not new to trouble. This country is not new to trouble. Maybe we are in this generation, but the reality is the human race has always had trouble. And there's always been a remnant of people through trouble that have always been faithful to the Lord. I want to challenge you today in the midst of your trouble, be faithful to the Lord. Be like Job. Trust the Lord. I know we're human and we go through anxiety and we question things in our heart. But the advice that Job was given to curse God and die was awful advice because God's hand was still on Job. Job lost everything, but God's hand was still on Job. His hand was still on him. While Job was going through the worst heartache, while Job was going through emotional and physical turmoil, God's blessing never left him. God never forsook him. God's hand was never removed from him. And hear me today, friend, God's hand is still upon you. Trouble doesn't mean that God's neglected you. Trouble just gives us a reason to continue to be faithful to an almighty God. Follow along with me, if you would, please. Let's continue reading in our Bibles in verse number 22. We find this. They were confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord and on whom they believed. This was encouraging to me. Going through troubled times, I see some actions that Paul and Barnabas and those that were with them on this missionary journey did. Now, it's very easy for us when we go through troubles to isolate ourselves to get very self-centered and focused on our problems. Paul clearly had some emotional scars. He clearly had some physical scars. He was rejected. No one likes to be rejected. He was physically hurt. Stones were thrown on top of him. Physically, he's still caring for his, his, his needs, tending to his wounds. But I want you to see something here, that in the midst of trouble, they continue to encourage others. I want to encourage you today, encourage others in the midst of your troubles. 
Don't stop encouraging. What did we find here in this passage of Scripture? The Bible says they went and they were confirming the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith. And that we must, through much tribulation, enter in the kingdom of God. What were they doing? They were continuing to encourage others and be a help to others. Now, could you imagine the Apostle Paul? He, he may be limping, he's bruised up, he's cut. He's already experienced, emotionally, he's experienced rejection. And what does he do in this time of trouble? He finds others that have needs, and he goes to them, and he confirms them. He encourages them. He, he provokes them to continue to serve the Lord. And he reminds them of this. It's going to be through tribulation that we're going to enter the kingdom of God. Now, that's not prosperity gospel preaching. <laughs> that is, when you're a Christian, you're going to endure heartache. When you're a Christian, there's going to be sorrow. There are people right now that are wondering, why is God allowing this to happen to his children? Because God is still the God of blessing through our troubles. Don't look at your trouble. Look to God. And when we do that in the midst of our troubles, we are able to encourage others. Don't get so confused and so focused on your troubles that you neglect the need of others. I want to thank our church family and others in the community because this past week, our church has encouraged so many families. Our church has helped feed children. I got a phone call from a police officer a, a, uh, uh, in our church, and he had spoken to a resource officer at a school we're trying to do everything we can to to help children that were without food this week because some children the only food they have is when they go to school and eat you may blame the government for that or their parents for that but the reality is it's not the kids fault and i believe the church ought to reach out and help those that have great needs and that's what our church decided to do that resource officer said this, that before this started, the Friday before the schools were closed, there was a young boy in his office in tears, crying, telling this school resource officer the only food he eats is when he comes to school. He told the resource officer this, the only clothes that he has is the uniform that he has to go to this school. He says, I don't have anything to wear other than my uniform. I have two changes of uniforms. He says, I have a pair of shorts and a t-shirt, and that's what I sleep in at night, but I wear this uniform every day. He has no food. Boy, when I heard this story, it gripped my heart. To be honest with you, it brought tears to my eyes. Because the community that I'm living in, the community that you're living in, right now needs Christians to encourage them. Many in this community are facing trouble and they don't have hope because they don't have Christ. Many in this community are facing troubles and they can't find joy because the Spirit of God, where the joy comes from, isn't living inside of them. But you, my friend, you know Christ. If you've trusted Him as your Savior, you have hope. You, my friend, you have the Spirit of God dwelling inside of you. If you've trusted Christ as your Savior, you have the source of joy. And because of that, we ought to encourage those around us. Paul and Barnabas, they were able to, in the midst of their trouble, they were able to encourage other people because they knew the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Christianity is easy when everything is good. But, oh, my friend, not always is everything good. But Christianity can still and should still allow us to make right decisions in our lives to, to serve others. Is your, is your faith strong enough today to encourage others? Is your faith strong enough? This past week, hotels uh, had to lay off people in our community because no one's staying at hotels. And this past week, our governor made an order to close restaurants and, and uh, now servers don't have that income that comes from tips 
And so what did the church do here? I'm so thankful that the people here in our church gave. We were able to help 19 families this week. Apart from the 30 families that we've fed every day this week, we are able to help 19 other families by giving them a check to help them through this economic time. That's 30 families where we delivered food. They were able to eat lunch every week because of your generosity, because you were encouraging people during this trouble. It's 19 families that received some financial compensation. The, the world that they're living in is discouraging. They just got news that they've been laid off. But here comes a child of God in the midst of trouble to encourage them. Church, I want to say thank you. We've helped elderly people this week to, to uh, uh, give them food. And what a wonderful example of encouraging other people through troubled times. What a Christian says in the midst of trouble holds, holds a lot of weight in others' ears. Maybe you've been at work and you are one that you've witnessed and you've shared the gospel for a long period of time. Or maybe your neighbors or your family members or, or, or friends, longtime friends, they know you're a Christian. And when the economy was great and, and raises were coming and, and vehicles were being purchased and the housing market was on fire and, and all of the things were good, it was easy to be a Christian and stand. But I want you to know this, that, that your testimony right now is going to hold a lot of weight to those that you've shared Christ with. What do they see now in the midst of trouble? Oh, I want to encourage you, Christian, in the midst of trouble right now, continue to be that light. Continue to be that encouragement. Continue to show those that you have already shared the gospel with that there is hope in Jesus Christ. Verse number 25, if you'll follow along with me in this verse. Verse number 25, here Paul and Barnabas, in the midst of their trouble, the Bible reads this, and when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down into Italia as well. Now, you say, what's the big deal with this verse? I like the beginning of this verse, and they preached the word. Now, if you watch services every week, it seems like one of my points every single week is the same thing. And that is just simply because I'm preaching verse by verse through the book of Acts. And you know what I find? Every chapter, several times even in a chapter, we find where the people, the disciples of Christ, Paul and uh, Barnabas and those, those that were on this missionary journey with him, they continued to preach the gospel. Now, have you ever gotten tired of someone? Uh, 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 or, uh, or gotten tired of sharing the gospel with someone that just doesn't want to hear it? Now, this is, again, don't forget, as we've studied through this book, we find where they've been rejected. They've been sent out of the city. They've been stoned. They've been beaten. They've been threatened and jailed. They, uh, it, it, it's, it's the same story every city they go to. But what do we find them doing in the midst of trouble? Preaching the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Thirdly, would you please write this down? Preaching the gospel in the midst of trouble. In living in troubled times, don't cease to give the gospel. Now is not the time to clam up and hold the truth to yourself. They're, the pharmaceutical companies are doing what they can quickly to try to find a a uh, medicine to help combat this this coronavirus COVID-19 and in they're looking for previous medicines that maybe are already on the market will these help and and some are trying to figure out a new medicine and 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 truly I believe that they're doing it because they care this this uh, has killed thousands of people matter of fact we had the first death in Toledo here in the Toledo hospital it was a father of a friend of mine. I found out this past week that my, my wife's great uncle, her mother's, my mother-in-law's uh, uncle, her dad's brother, died this past week of the virus in New Jersey. Got word this week that a very close friend of mine, a pastor in the Washington, D.C. area, was in the hospital and is in the hospital still and was in pretty serious condition with this virus. It, uh, 
it's affecting people we know now. And if anything, we're praying for medicine, a cure for this. It'd be a wonderful thing. But in the midst of this, we do have a cure for a person that is dying spiritually. And his name is Jesus Christ. Now is not the time, Christian, to not share the gospel. You say, well, who wants to hear it? We're living in troubled times. The Bible still says that the fields are white into harvest. You know what that tells me? There's a world that wants to hear it. There's a world that needs to hear the glorious message of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it's in that message that brings the, the lost person hope. It's in that message of the gospel that brings life to a, a dying soul. And all I want to encourage you this week as you live your life, as we go through troubles, don't cease to preach the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. People are hurting and people need to hear truth. Oh, will you commit today in these troubled times to give people truth? Will you commit to share the gospel? Number four, and as I promised, I'm going to be quick and we're done. I want you to see with me in verse number 27. The Bible says, And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God has done with them, and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. Now I'm going to ask you to do something here. I know we're not sitting in these pews or these seats. We're not sitting here today as a church. But we're still gathered as a church together. I'm looking into a camera today, and on the other side of that camera is um, Alan. <laughs> but uh, but uh, in your home, you're seeing me. The church is still gathered. I want you to do this right now. If you're on Facebook, I want you to type in something that you are thankful for right now. I want us as a church to gather together, and I want the church family to be encouraged. The Bible says they shared God's blessings in the midst of troubles. I know, again, we're not gathered together in this church, but we are gathered together. There is over, probably by this time, there's some 300 or so that are right now watching uh, uh, this message. And, and in that could be, as I know my family, there's uh, four or five um, that are watching there in our house. I mean, we could have as many as a thousand people right now watching this message online. The church is still gathered. I want you right now, would you take, look down at your screen and look down at your keyboard and would you just say a prayer right now, Lord, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for this in my life and I want to share this blessing. Would you right now type something that you are thankful for so that everyone in the church right now can rejoice with you. I, I know we could all write something, a need that we have right now. Every one of us could write something that we're nervous about. Every one of us could right now write something that we're troubled about. Every one of us right now could write something that is causing fear. We could say, I'm concerned about this or I'm concerned about that. And, and every one of us could have a prayer request. But the Bible says, again, let's look here again with me in verse number 27. And when they were come and had gathered in the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. They gathered together and they began to praise the Lord. They gathered together and they said the door was opened. A door of faith was opened. What door has God opened right now in your life? What is he doing to bless you? What are you thankful for right now? Now, I'm not able to, at this moment, read through what people are being thankful for, but I hope that you are participating right now. And as you are writing that and praising the Lord for something, I hope that you're going through and you're reading what other people are writing together because right now the church is gathered. And right now we can, in troubled times, share God's blessings. You see, others will come to Jesus through this trouble when his people are eager to go through this door of faith that God has opened. 
I'm not minimizing the trouble we're facing. People are sick. People are hurting. People are going through economic troubles. Our world is in trouble. Every time our governor or a politician, an elected official gets up and speaks, it almost seems like the situation worsens because something else we're restricted from. But hear me today, our hope is not in our government. Our hope is not in mankind. Our hope is not in material possessions. Our hope is not in the things of this world. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. In church, as we gather today, let's determine that we are going to share God's blessings. What are you thankful for right now? Father, you are so good. Your word is alive. Your word is what we need. 2,000 years ago, a story, a missionary journey was, was being done. And we now, 2,000 years later, this very week, open your word. And we find how to behave or how to live in times of trouble. I thank you that your word applies to us in this generation. May we be obedient to it. We want to thank you, Lord, for being a wonderful God. We trust you. Our faith is in you. I pray that you bless our church. Every single home, Lord, right now that is gathered around a computer screen, a TV, or a monitor, an iPad, maybe a phone, the church is gathered. And Lord, we lift our voices up and we thank our Heavenly Father for your many blessings. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the cross. And Lord, we pray that you bring peace to this world that's in trouble. And we ask you this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you for watching our services online today. I invite you back again next week and you will hear another message from God's Word. If you are listening today and you realize that you need to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want to invite you to do that right now. The Bible tells us that every person has sinned, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Realize that you're a sinner, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Would you realize that you're a sinner? Realize there's a penalty for your sin but understand and by faith accept that free gift of salvation that Jesus Christ offers you because of the cross. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For God so loved the world though that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, the Bible says thou shalt be saved because God's not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to pay our sin debt upon the cross. He shed his blood on the cross, and that blood is the atonement for our sin. Will you receive that, that gift today of eternal life? Would you accept it by faith, believing that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven? And just simply pray and ask the Lord to forgive you of your sin and receive that gift of eternal life. I hope you'll do that today. Maybe you were blessed by the message in another area of your life. You had a need met today. Would you call and let us know whether you trusted Jesus Christ today or you were helped by the message? We want to know. We want to pray with you. You can call the church office at 419-866-0773. We want to hear from you. I also want to thank our church and those in the community that have helped us in our COVID-19 outreach efforts. Many children are going hungry because they're not able to go to school and eat the, the meals that the school had supplied. Many people have been unemployed now because restaurants have closed and factories have closed, stores have closed, hotels have had to lay off and many people now are hurting and wondering what they're going to do financially. Our church, because of your help, has able, been able to help them meet a need. We're feeding children every single day because of your help. 
We've given checks to people who have been laid off because of your help. We're buying grocery for elderly people that can't get out because of your help. And I want to thank you for that. But this crisis is not over, and there's still a lot of help that people need. And I want to ask that you give, you financially. Every single penny that you give, I assure you, is going to go to help someone that has a great need. You can give on our church app. You can give on our website at Monclova Road or monclovabaptist.org. Or you can simply mail a check to us at Monclova Road Baptist Church, 7819 Box 15, Monclova Road. And that's Monclova, Ohio, 43542. If the Lord will put it on your heart to continue to give or maybe give for the first time, I want to assure you you're helping people that have a great need. Thank you. We love you, and we hope to hear you from you soon.